Hey, yo, <laughs> and welcome to the fifth episode of the Norwalk Film Festival podcast. I'm Sean Fox, one of the volunteer board members of the festival. Thanks for joining, whether you're listening or you're watching. This interview series is to help share the stories of our filmmakers before our festival so that you can get to know them a little bit before going to see their films in person. Today's interview is with writer-director Sadie Gray Murphy. She wrote and directed The Audition, which is part of our students' shorts block. The Audition is about a casting call gone wrong. When a director calls actors in, they don't come back out. The Audition is one of dozens of films that are part of our fourth annual festival, and they'll all be screening January 19th through the 21st in Norwalk, Connecticut. And one of the things I love about this festival is that we get to meet students like Sadie Gray who are just starting their filmmaking journey and people who have made like tens and tens and dozens, I don't know if you say tens and tens, but have made dozens of films. Uh, and as part of our schedule, we have mixers on both days, um, Friday and Saturday, so that filmmakers from all levels of experience can mingle, network, and discuss their next project or what they've done. You might even meet someone that you can work with to submit a film to next year's festival. We all hope that. So visit NorwalkFilmFestival.org, get your tickets now or after the interview, but either way, get them today. And now, my interview with Sadie Gray Murphy. All right, we are joined today by Sadie Gray Murphy, the writer and director of The Audition, which is airing in our student block at this year's Norwalk Film Festival. Sadie Gray, thanks so much for joining me. Yeah, thank you. Before we jump into talking about the audition, um, I want to talk uh, a little bit about how many <laughs> films you've put out in the last uh, little bit. Uh, I was ch- you know, looking on your YouTube page, and by my count, you've done 11 uh, short films. Is that correct? Yep, that sounds <laughs> about right. All right. How, uh, how are you able to... Well, actually, sorry. How... What do you do when you get an idea for a film? Like, what is your process in getting it from your brain and and into the you know, final edit? Well, I keep like a running list of notes, like on my phone and in several notebooks. And really, anytime I have an idea, I'll like um, just write it down, and then I'll kind of decide, like, oh, like this week I want to make a film, and like this weekend I'm going to shoot it. So then I'll spend the week like writing and collecting my ideas and like sometimes formulating it into a script. And then I'll kind of just decide like today's going to be the day I'm going to shoot it. And I kind of do it in one day and usually edit the next day. But I like doing like I for some things I it takes me a while to plan them. But for others, I like doing like um, kind of impromptu shoot. Mm-hmm. Um. When you're looking back at those notes any times, do you see one and you were like, what was I, what does this idea even mean? <laughs> like, do you, do you have just like random ideas and then you're like, I don't, I don't know what like firefighter, uh, obstacle course meant or something like that. Definitely. I am a big writer also. So I'll scribble down like lines that kind of become mm-hmm. ideas for things. So there are a bunch of just like, random lines written in my notes where I'm like wow this is really strange but then (laughs) sometimes the one little line ends up being like a whole story so it's really cool sometimes that's the spark that gets you into like a full thing that's cool yeah so some of your films uh like a lot of them have no dialogue you know it's just very visual based um is that something that you're consciously doing like you like painting a picture with visuals versus have you know relying on dialogue Right. Yeah. I mean, one trick is also that I'm a I'm still a student filmmaker, so I don't have access to like good like audio recording systems all the time. And through the program I did over the summer, I was able to use like uh, real like sound equipment. So I was able to like one of my films is a dialogue film. And then for the audition, that one was actually supposed to be kind of in a format that was um based on Alfred Hitchcock and his use of like suspense through visuals and like sounds but no dialogue um but I I really enjoy like visual storytelling so I think that's reflected in a lot of my work and I really enjoy music so I I like doing kind of um more I guess music video style things yeah um I like and you know, in watching through the stuff you've put up, I uh, I, I liked all the songs <laughs> that that came through all those. That was, that was great to see. Um, 
Speaking of, uh, you know, you said you pulled from Hitchcock for the audition. What other influences or other directors and, and movies do you like or do you consider like inspiration for some of your films? I'm a really big Wes Anderson fan, as like many other filmmakers are. Um, so like for him, like his compositions and like the symmetry in his films is like really inspirational for me. Um, I'm trying to think of others. I moon. Hmm. I, I like just a, a lot of different directors, a lot of art directors. Um, Gus Van Zandt is one of my favorites. Um, who else? Um, Sophia Coppola, I would say, is probably my favorite. Yeah. Um, did you see Priscilla? I did. It was amazing. I have not yeah. seen it yet. It's, uh, it's on my end of the year to-do list. So, <laughs> it's It's really probably my favorite film she's done. It just feels like kind of the, it's just, it's just great. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Lost in Translation is a absolute classic. So that's. that's Definitely. Uh, your bio mentioned that you're also a dancer. Is that something you find, uh, you know, the, the lines blur between dance and film and like, you know, using, I mean, as you said, music is a big part of the films that you like to put together. So how do you think dance and directing and writing films kind of cross over? Totally. Um, dance is kind of what got me into film, like really seriously, like filmmaking, because I've been a dancer since I was about three. And so I've like my whole life um, been in like an art form that's very collaborative and like about working with others and like coming together and creating like something together especially like when you're a part of an ensemble and you're putting on productions together it's really not that different from filmmaking and I've also gotten to do a bunch of um, choreography through my dance career and being in the role of a choreographer and like having a vision and working with dancers to create that vision is kind of what made me realize, oh, I would love to direct. Yeah. And like, I'm a big photographer as well. So I was like, wow, like directing and filmmaking is like combining all of my worlds together. <laughs> yeah. Choreography plus pictures and leading a team. Yeah. That's basically, to, to very succinctly put it, what a director is doing. Um, now, so now moving to the audition specifically, um, which will be filming or which will be screaming as part of our uh, students block at the Norwich Film Festival. Uh, it's a horror short. It's a it's a short short, um, which is, it's great. I, I do enjoy that you, you're you able to, in all of your films, they're all very short, but in a great way, like pack everything, a, you know, a nice succinct story into the, a short amount of time, which is always fun to watch. Um, so uh, with the audition, did you always envision it as a horror or where did the initial idea come from? Well, this actually also came from my dance career, the idea for this because I've like probably since I was about eight I've gone to all these auditions for like um for roles and productions and like um summer programs and things like that and like they're they're very fun but there's definitely an anxiety that comes along with them oh yeah because yeah um I don't know just everything about them is a little scary so I was like "Ooh, maybe I should take that and turn it into like a horror kind of a thing um and I had the vision for like the um originally before I knew it was going to be like no sound just like or no dialogue rather I had the idea for just like the warm-ups of like theater and dance and like auditions and like how I don't know how kind of silly those are and like how <laughs> distinct those are to like those for sure art forms like when you do so stretches kind of, and vocal warm-ups and stuff and yeah right exactly it kind of came from that and then I was like "Ooh, I'm just interested in like how um the director interacts with uh these people in the room and then how like the people interact with each other because you'll see when um the kind of protagonist walks into the room she kind of looks around at her like fellow uh like the other people who are auditioning and they all kind of share the same look of like really big fear and anxiety but at <laughs> first they're kind of excited and like jittery about it um but yeah 
I really took the emotions of what it feels like auditioning and like made it scary and dark. It just ramped it up to 11. <laughs> yeah. So the, the film is mostly in black and white, except for um, the our main protagonist, her hat. Um, it's like yeah. gray she's wearing. Uh, what was the, was there an inspiration behind that? Uh, and you know, why did you choose green specifically if, if there's a reason? Yeah. Um, I actually found the hat when I was traveling and I was like, wow, this hat could kind of be a main character in a film. Like it's <laughs> a great looking hat. It's like a bright green color. Um, so I had the hat and before I got to like post and like editing I was envisioning it just to be like in color with like her hat as like like the bright green color and like like I knew it would stick out before I even put the rest of it in black and white if that oh yeah sense. Mm -hmm. and then I was like this would be interesting if I um like highlight it even more by putting it in black and white and then that also is kind of an homage to Hitchcock and like older directors who like a lot of their work was in black and white. Mm -hmm. So I kind of was like, I like how this looks and it's interesting. Yeah. I think it, it definitely isn't it. Well, it certainly pops, especially that green really comes out with the black and white. And uh, yeah. And I think the whole film um, is just a, a great little uh, anxiety inducing <laughs> um little horror film it's it's uh i really enjoyed watching it um so just to wrap up here what uh are your next projects do you have anything you're working on now um or that you want to get started on without divulging too much of course you got to keep some director's secrets but <laughs> what it, what do you got yeah i am doing so much right now i'm actually working on an interview series about new york and oh, that's i right. just i saw that it's, a it's lunch called lunch with the new yorker yeah. Yep. So I just put out the first episode for that about a month ago, and I am hoping to like record the next episode soon and try to get that out like in the early springtime. Um, and then besides that, I have like lots of little projects I'm working on. Um, yeah, just lots of little short films. Cool. What what inspired the uh, like change from like a narrative short to doing these interviews or just something you were interested in hearing other people's stories what was the impetus behind that I yeah I uh really enjoy like watching documentaries along with um like narrative films so I was like it would be fun to try this different style of filmmaking and um it also like broadens what I can do and like who I can work with and um I'm a big fan of New York, so it's fun <laughs> to structure a series around that. So, yeah, yeah, that's great. And then, lastly, uh, if you could pick right now, what is your dream project, or who's a dream person that you would love to work with? Ooh, that's a great question. <laughs> um, I do really love Sofia Coppola, so I'd probably have to say her. Um, mm. just because I feel like her um style and the way she combines like um color like and uh music and everything together is really like what I want to do as a filmmaker mm -hmm. um and I feel like she picks interesting subject matters too and like interesting subjects um one of my favorites by her is Marie Antoinette and I love like film set in a different time period so i think that would be really cool to get to see what would, we could make together i don't know yeah that would be great i mean hopefully uh can be a launching block to help get you on her radar and <laughs> get you in there yeah cool well thank you so much for joining me sadie gray uh it's been a pleasure chatting with you and um i uh hope to see you at our festival in january awesome thank you Thanks to Sadie Gray for joining me. Come on down to the Norwalk Film Festival January 20th and 21st to see the audition along with all of our other films. Visit our website, norwalkfilmfestival.org, for ticketing info, schedules, and more. We're an entirely volunteer-run organization and couldn't do it without you, 
All of our festival uh, costs come from our ticket sales. So it'd be great if you can show up and help spread the word. Uh, also follow us on all of our social media platforms at the handle at Norwalk Film Festival. There you get all the up-to-date details on everything happening with the festival and see more interviews like this, other posters from the festival, and you can share it with all your friends and tell them to come on down too because we, we'd love to have you uh, more than merrier. Thanks for listening and look forward to seeing you in Norwalk.